Hey guys, this is Charles Jaeger with Shutterstock, and this is gonna be Premiere Pro Playbook, part one. You may have seen our other series, After Effects Playbook, which currently has three parts. Definitely go check those out if you haven't. And in this video, I'm gonna cover 10 tips and shortcuts that I use all the time when I'm working in Premiere. All right guys, for the first tip, I wanna show you how we can ripple delete between multiple clips. So in my sequence here, you can see I've got a lot of clips and I've got these gaps in between them. And this usually happens when I bring in all of my clips from a shoot and I'm reviewing them. I might delete the ones that I'm probably not gonna use. And that leaves all these gaps in between the footage. And I may wanna have all these together. And I could just kind of right click in between two of these clips and I can select ripple delete. And that will delete the gap between two clips. But if you have a lot of gaps between your footage like I do here, just click and drag and highlight all of your clips. And then come up here to sequence and come down to close gap. And that will go ahead and ripple delete between all of your clips. Now you can see they're all lined up together. And this is just an easy way to clean up your timeline when you're working. The next tip I wanna show you is how to quickly add a fade transition onto any clip. And to do this, we're just gonna use the keyboard shortcut for this. So go ahead and select your clip here, you can see, and hit Control D, Command D on a Mac. And you'll see when I did that, it added a cross dissolve right at the beginning and the end of the clip. This is a really fast way to add fade transitions on your clips without having to fumble around the effects panel. And what you can also do is you can actually grab the cross dissolve transition, you can extend it or make it shorter, or you can even delete it on one specific side. So if you just wanna have kind of a fade out at the end of your clip, you can do that really quickly with this shortcut. Again, it's Control D or Command D on a Mac. I use this one all the time. Next, I wanna show you guys how we can set the default to image length when we add an image to a sequence. So let me just demonstrate this here. I'm gonna drag this image into my sequence. And we can see when I bring this image in default, it's at five seconds long. And so let's say you had a lot of images and you're making a slideshow, maybe you want these images to be on here for 10 seconds. The way it is right now, you have to add your image, drag this out to around 10 seconds, line it up and do that for every single image. And obviously that's kind of annoying to do. We can actually change this really easily in the preferences. Let me go ahead and delete this image and come here to edit and come down here to preferences and then down here to timeline. And the third setting down you're gonna see is we have still image default duration. And again, the default is five seconds. So I could easily change it to something like 10 seconds. Go ahead and click okay. Now one important thing that you will have to do is re-import your images back into your project. And when you do that, those images will have the new default length that you set. So let me just drag back in some images here. And now if I go ahead and select one of these images and bring that into my timeline, we're gonna see that it now is 10 seconds long. Next, I wanna show you guys how we can have footage automatically scale to our sequence size. And this is something that can really speed up your workflow. So what I've got here is a 1080p timeline. I've got some 4K footage, I'm gonna drag this in and you're gonna see the footage, obviously it's cropped in because this is bigger than our sequence. And if I select the clip and come here to effects controls, we can see the scale's at 100%. So if I wanna see all this clip, again, because it's 4K, I'll have to set it to 50%. Go ahead and hit enter. And this can be very tedious if you're working with a lot of 4K clips. And it would save us a lot of time if those clips would automatically scale down and fit the size of our sequence. And then if we wanna crop in on them later, we could always scale them up and take advantage of that 4K resolution which is a setting we can actually change to have Premiere automatically do this and it's super convenient. So let's come up here to edit, come down here to preferences. And now we're gonna go to media. And in the media preferences, the force setting down is default media scaling. And off default, it's usually set to none. If we toggle this down, we wanna select set to frame size. Go ahead and select that and click okay. So let me go ahead and delete that first clip we had. And let's bring in that clip again. And now you can see the footage has automatically scaled to fit perfectly within our sequence. And if I click on the clip, we can come here to scale. You'll see it's at 50%. Again, we can always scale it back up if we want to. This just helps save me a lot of time from having to constantly adjust the scale of clips that might be bigger or smaller than my sequence settings. Next, I wanna show you guys a tip for how you can perfectly align up audio. Now this is something I encounter all the time when I'm trying to line up music, maybe with a cut. So let me zoom in here by pressing the plus key on the keyboard there. And you can see I've got this audio waveform, kind of this bass hit. And maybe I wanna have a transition right here on this new clip to kind of come on right when that hits. But you can see they're not exactly lined up. There's a little gap here. And if I try to move this over, it's moving the audio basically one frame at a time. And this can be quite annoying when you're trying to get something to cut right on a beat. 
And obviously audio doesn't have frames like video does, so it's kind of a question of why can't I line this up exactly right? Well, there's a really quick and easy solution for this. Just come up here to the top of the timeline where you kind of see the frame numbers and right click, then come down here and select show audio time units. And when we do that, we're gonna see the numbers here at the top of the timeline change. And actually if we press the plus key here, we can actually zoom in even further now and we can move this audio in really small increments which is gonna allow us to line up that bass hit perfectly with our cut. And then I can zoom back out. Now we can see that that kind of nudged it over so they're perfectly aligned. And then whenever you get done with that, just come back up here and right click again and check off show audio time units. And that'll just change your kind of frame count on your timeline back to normal. But our audio again has been moved to the exact point we wanted it to. Next, I wanna show you guys how we can quickly reverse speed of a clip. Now this is really simple, but it's something I frequently use and I use it a lot on drone footage. So I'll go ahead and scroll through here. You can see we have the shot moving. And let's say I wanted to reverse that. All you need to do is just right click on your clip and then come here to speed and duration. And then you're gonna see we have the option to check on to reverse the speed. Go ahead and click okay. And now this clip has just basically been reversed. So if I go ahead and continue to scroll this, you'll see it's actually going in the other direction. Next, I wanna show you guys how we can link and group clips in a sequence. So linking clips and grouping clips is something that can kind of get a little bit confusing. So let me go ahead and explain the differences between the two. So I've got two different clips here. I've got a video clip and an audio clip. And let's say I want both of these to basically just act like a normal video clip with audio. So what I would do is just click and drag, highlight both of those together. Then I'm gonna right click. I'll come over to link and I'll select that. And now these clips are gonna basically act like a normal video clip with audio. And I can drag out or drag in on each side of it just like a standard clip. Now, if I wanted to group clips, let me go ahead and show you how we do that. So I'm gonna just drag and highlight all of these clips and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select group. And the big difference here is we can still move them all together, you're gonna see, so those are acting like a group. But we still have the option to actually adjust the duration of each individual aspect of those clips, of this group. And you can see they'll still all move together. So that's the main differences between linking clips and grouping clips. Next, I wanna show you guys how we can actually export LUTs in Premiere Pro. And to do this, we'll actually need to be working in the color workspace. So you can see I'm working in a version of the editing workspace here. So just come up here to the top and click on color. And when we do that, we're gonna see the Lumetri color panel open up over here on the right hand side. And any changes we make over here, it's automatically gonna apply Lumetri color to whatever clip we're looking at in our sequence. But we can actually export a LUT directly from this panel as well. So let's go ahead and kind of create a look for this particular clip. Let's say I have a lot of clips from this shoot. Maybe I wanna use that LUT on several different clips. So I'm coming here to basic correction and I'm just gonna dial in a quick look. So I might cool this off a little bit with the temperature, add in some contrast, maybe bring up the highlights. Let's come down here to the creative tab here and maybe I wanna add in a little more vibrance. And maybe if I come down here to the curves, I'll open up the RGB curves. And in the red channel here, I may pull this down a little bit to add a little bit more kind of blue in the shadows. So we'll go ahead and say that's the look that I wanna create a LUT from. And in order to export our LUT, all we need to do is come up here where it says Lumetri Color at the top. You'll see the little menu bars. Go ahead and click that. And you're gonna see we have the option here to export a look or a dot cube, which is a LUT. And in my case here, I'm actually gonna export that. So I'm gonna click that. And that'll give us the option to go ahead and name and save our LUT. So I'm just gonna call this Winter Drone LUT. And I'll go ahead and click Save. And now that has actually exported that dot cube LUT. And just to demonstrate this, I wanna highlight another clip in my sequence from the same shoot. And we can come over here to the Lumetri Color Panel. And instead of me dialing in that same look, I'm gonna come over here to Creative. And you can apply a LUT in the basic correction here, but I actually recommend doing it in the Creative because it's gonna allow us to adjust the intensity if you want to. And where it says Look, I'm just gonna to toggle this down and select Browse. And then I just wanna select that LUT that we just created, go ahead and click Open. And now we can see it's immediately applied that look directly to our clip. Next, I wanna show you guys how we can actually use LUTs in our exports through Media Encoder. So Media Encoder is actually a joint program that comes with Premiere, but you may not know that you can actually apply LUTs directly to any exports you're running through Media Encoder. So let's say I have a lot of footage that I filmed from a shoot, and maybe I wanna do a little bit of a slight color correction to all the clips before I send them to the client. Well, this is really easy to do in Media Encoder. So on my first clip here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the preset. That's gonna launch the export settings, but what we can do to apply a LUT to all these clips really quickly through the export, just come over here to the effects panel and you're gonna see we have the option to add a Lumetri look or a LUT. So I'm gonna check this on and I'm gonna go ahead and over here and select a LUT. 
And because these are all winter clips from that same drone shoot, I'm just gonna select that winter drone LUT, go ahead and click open. And now we can even see on the preview here for this footage that that LUT has been applied and it will be applied through the export. But a way we can save even more time instead of me applying this to each one of those clips, I can actually save this as a preset. So up here you'll see save as a preset. I'm gonna click that and I'll just call this winter drone export. Go ahead and click OK and go ahead and click OK. Now on my other clips, I can just change these now under the preset, I'll just toggle down the down arrow, select winter drone export, and that'll change that. And then I can actually hold shift and click and change this for all of these as well. So if you ever need to add a slight color grade to a bunch of clips, go ahead and create a LUT, add it to them, and then you can quickly export them through Media Encoder. For the final tip, I wanna show you guys how we can actually stitch a bunch of clips together to be one file in Media Encoder. So this is a cool trick I really didn't know about until recently, but if you ever need to stitch a bunch of clips together to be one single file, you can actually bypass Premiere Pro and do that directly in Media Encoder. So with Media Encoder open, I'm gonna drag this up. You can see I've got these video clips here. And let's say I wanna add these into Media Encoder. So if I just click and hold to drag, we're gonna see we actually get two things pop up. One that says drop here to add as separate sources, and that's the default. If I actually highlight over here, you're gonna see it's gonna drop here to stitch the clips together. So I'm gonna let go. I'll go ahead and minimize this. And now we can see it's actually going to stitch all these clips together and we can adjust the preset settings for that. And again, I'll just export one single file with each of those clips. And if you wanna see the different sources, go ahead and click there and it'll toggle down and show you all the clips that are gonna be stitched together. Then if we click on the preset, it'll give us an idea of how long it's gonna be. We can actually scroll through here and see the different clips. And again, if we wanted to, we could apply a LUT to all these as well. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. So again, this can be another trick to save you some time and you don't have to drag and drop the clips in here. I'm actually gonna delete these really quickly. You can also stitch them together when you import them traditionally. So if I click on the plus icon here, you'll see I have a bunch of video clips. I'm just going to hold shift and select a bunch of these. And down here, you're gonna see it says stitch clips together. Go ahead and check that and click open. And now again, that's launched them where it's gonna stitch them all together and we can see all those clips there. All right, guys, hopefully you picked up some tips you can use in Premiere Pro. If you want even more Premiere tips, check out Robbie's video on the Shutterstock channel, 15 Things I Wish I Knew as a Beginner in Premiere. Keep an eye out for part two of this series. And if you guys have any requests for tutorials, let us know in the comments. I'll catch you guys in the next one.